Hello, church family. My name is James. Grab your Bibles and let's go through the Word. All right, we are picking up somewhere. (laughs) Okay, Uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 29. We are going to talk about the sign of Jonah as you see it in your NIVs. There we go. As the crowds increased, Jesus said, this is a wicked generation. It asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was assigned to the Ninevites, so also will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. Key in right there. Something greater than Jonah is here. You you see Jesus bring up uh, the queen of Sheba who traveled to listen to Solomon's wisdom. Who is wiser than Solomon? Jesus Okay, and then we talk about the the sign of Jonah, but there's kind of two here that we're kind of talking about. We all know that uh, Jonah was in the belly of the whale for, or excuse me, the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, um, and then he came out. And then now we know that Jesus would be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, and then he would resurrect. Okay, but there's another thing that happens with this sign of Jonah if we think about it a little bit more intently. Jonah goes to Nineveh and preaches a message of repentance, just like Jesus. Okay, so Jesus is preaching a message of repentance. Uh, He's preaching that the kingdom of God is near. But the people of Nineveh actually repented. Okay, now we know if we read into Nahum that eventually they went back to their old ways and uh, judgment came for them. But in the moment when Jonah was there, these the Ninevites repented. And Jesus is calling out Israel and says that this is a wicked generation. It asks for a sign, but none will be given it except for the sign of Jonah. But this wicked generation asks for a so- asking for a sign. Jesus has already given a ton of signs. How much more does he need to do? I like the way that Mark uh, Moore puts this. How dare they ask for a sign from heaven? Oh, there is nothing wrong with wanting a little verification. That was the whole purpose of miracles. Jesus has already done a slug of them. Why on earth would they ask for more? Precisely because they are bent on unbelief. Now, this is surprising since they are supposedly people of God. Even pagans knew better than that. For instance, the Ninevites and the Queen of Sheba knew a good thing when they heard it. Yet these folks stand here blaspheming Jesus. Their shameful behavior will be exposed on Judgment Day, even by these pagans. They will get a sign, all right. It won't be from heaven. It will be from the belly of the earth when Jesus resurrects. That, that's heavy. And if we are not believing upon Jesus for our salvation... John 3, 16 through 18 tells us we stand condemned already. We are in no different of a place. The loved ones that you have that are not submitted to Christ, that's all they get. They stand condemned right now if they aren't believing upon the Lord Jesus. I hope this is helpful. I hope going through some of these things lets you look at these scriptures a little bit more intently. We see a little bit of a tie-in of a message to Gentiles. That's a cool thing, considering we are not, we are not uh, Israel, uh, we're not the children of God by the same blood. We're bought by blood, and we are now adopted uh, children of Abraham. It's a very cool thing, children of God by extension, the promise fulfilled to Abraham. But let us not ask for a sign. We have a sign. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. That is gospel. That is good news. He conquered death. He lived the life that we could not. He died the death that we deserve to give us life that we do not deserve. Praise God for Jesus, who has now reconciled us to God the Father. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for miracles that that confirmed he was who he said he was. We thank you for sending him so that there might be hope for us. And it is him. It is him. He is that hope. Father, thank you for Jesus, more and more every day. 
We do not need a sign. We have enough. We have your word. And you've indwelt us with the promised Holy Spirit. Thank you for that as well. Help us live Jesus today so that more people do not have to be condemned. It is in his name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Go preach Christ. See you guys. Remember to like, subscribe, and click that bell.